Hey everyone, this is David Pike, the Motor City Mechanic. Now in today's video, we're working on a 2019 Ram 2500, and it's got the latest and greatest 6.7 Cummins in it. And what we're gonna be doing is removing and replacing the rear fuel filter. So make sure to check it out because there are some differences from the previous generation. Now for 2019 and up, they made some changes to the rear fuel filter. This is what we're used to seeing. Ever since they implemented that other one that was frame mounted or above the differential, that second filter, this is what we're used to seeing, a spin on metal filter. Down in the bottom was where the drain and the water and fuel sensor went. Big changes, 2019, they went to a cartridge. It almost looks very similar as far as the housing as what the front looks like. We've got a plastic cap we've got to remove, but this one doesn't go in from the top, it goes in from the bottom. So that's the difference. So when you go to buy one and you've got a 2019 and newer with the updated 6.7, they may try to give you this. In the end, you're gonna probably find out that this is what you need. So the tools that I'm gonna be using for replacing that rear fuel filter, first thing, right off the bat, we need a 28 millimeter socket. That's what we're gonna be using. Now I've got a long ratchet wrench right here. That's only for breaking it loose. We're not using it for going back. And we're using this for tightening it down. There is no spec. It just says snug it up. So again, what is your snug versus my snug? Stay away from the long ratchet. Use something short. Just get it tight. Any kind of extensions you might need, swivel. We'll find out as we go because we do have a drive shaft in the way. If we can get directly on it with just a socket ratchet, we will. If not, we've got a series of extensions in the swivel so we can kind of go off to the side. Either way, we've got options. Now the rear fuel filter is pretty much located in the same position it always has. On the 2500s, you can look right above the rear drive shaft, just in front of the rear diff. More than likely on the rest of the vehicles, it's probably gonna be frame mounted and a little bit midway. So that's where you need to look for. In this case, 2500, so we already know above the diff. Now one thing you're gonna need to do is find something for that fuel to drain into because it's gonna make a bit of a mess. These are perfect. You can pick them up at your local hardware store. I love these better over anything you can get at the parts store because size-wise, and they're cheap. I'm lucky enough to have the vehicle on the rack so I can use a regular drain cart. But nonetheless, you're gonna lose some fuel and we gotta catch it in something. So get you a container of some sort. So now that you know where the rear fuel water separator is located, we're gonna be talking about the difference between this and the previous versions. Now this one's all plastic. Inside we've got the cartridge for the fuel filter. We do have a drain right here with a nipple. And we've also got a place right here where we can put a 28 millimeter socket. That's what makes it very similar to the front fuel filter because you're actually taking this cover or cap off the same way you would do for the front. Now when it comes to this drain, now unless it's over tightened, you should be able to grab it by hand and back it off. If not, you can get up in here with an eight millimeter socket and you can back it off that way. So what we're gonna do so that we don't make a big mess because the drive shaft is directly below as this is draining, it's gonna splatter. We're gonna put a hose right here on the nipple. So what I've done is I grabbed a clear section of hose that I've got that comes from my fluid extractor. I'm just gonna slide it on the nipple right there. I'm gonna get the other end and let it hang down to my drain bucket. Now for a hose on and the container up under, it's time to go ahead and open that valve. So now that it's finally stopped draining, we can go ahead and pull the hose off and shut the valve. Just snug it down by hand. Now we're ready to grab our 28 millimeter socket and regular ratchet and see if we can actually break it loose. If we can't, we'll come back with a larger ratchet. <coughs> now this is the first time this one's been off. So sometimes they can be a little tight. Then again, you never know who tightened it before you. If this is the second or third time it's coming off. And now we can grab it by hand. Now watch out, just in case there's still some more fuel that may come out. Still keep your pan directly below it. As you can see, even though we took the drain off and drained it, we still had some come out. And now that we've got the cover off, we just need to reach up in here 
and pop that cartridge out. It may be a little hard to get up in there. Just take your time, work your way around until you finally get loose. Now when you grab your replacement fuel filter, I want you to pay attention right here. There's a top and a bottom. This is the top. The top has these two little slots right here, smaller opening. The bottom has the larger. Now when you go back up with this, you need to line these slots up. Now the way to actually orientate it perfectly is keep it in line with the truck. Front, rear of the truck, doesn't matter which way you rotate it. But that's pretty much where those pieces actually line up inside that housing. They're not off to the side, they're pretty much straight front to rear. Now the next thing we need to do is we need to replace the o-ring on the cap which is actually pretty easy you just kind of squeeze it off grab your new one and slide it on now you want to make sure you put it in the right groove and it's the bottom one right here At this point you're ready to go ahead and grab the filter grab the cap and get ready to install it one thing they do recommend is if you've got some fuel still sitting somewhere in a container kind of lube up the o-rings here that way it actually doesn't go up in there dry. Same thing with the one right here. Usually there's enough residual on the cap from when we took it off. We can actually give a little coating on. Now we're ready to install. Now all we're gonna do is, again, make sure we get those grooves in the right position. We're gonna go straight up in there. We may have to rotate it slightly until it snaps into place. Now we'll grab the cap. So at this point, we're just gonna grab the cap, sit it up in here. Start threading it on. Now, I don't know if you picked it up in the beginning when I was talking earlier, but there is no spec for tightening this down. Service information says snug it up. Now, snug to me means probably a ratchet, not by hand, because it is still kind of tight, as you saw when coming off. We're just going to go down. Again, we're going to use a regular ratchet. We're not going to try to use a big, long one. And there we go. At that point, just double check to make sure that the drain's shut. We're gonna clean everything off, lower the vehicle, prime the system. Now that you've got the fuel filters replaced, there's a couple more things you need to do. The first one is we need to prime the system. Second thing is we need to reset the fuel life monitor on the dash. Third thing is we kinda need to clean things off because we don't want any drops of fuel on the ground or the smell of diesel coming into the cab when we're returning the vehicle to the customer. Now, now as far as priming the system, all you got to do is turn the key to the run position. We're not going to crank it, we're just going to turn it to the run position. Leave it there for 30 seconds. That's going to give the electric transfer pump time to actually flow some of the diesel fuel through both of the filters all the way to the front. And what we're going to do is turn the key off, wait 5 more seconds, and repeat. We'll turn it to the run for 30 seconds. Again, turn it off. You may want to do this two or three times. At that point, it should have enough fuel in the system for that final crank to actually start. It may spin over just a little bit longer, but again, it should finally start. If not, just keep repeating this until it does. Now, the next thing we need to do is we need to reset the monitor on the cluster, the one that tells us how much longer we have till we need to replace the fuel filters, much like we do when we change the oil. Now, we're going to be using the cluster and the left side switches on the steering wheel. Right now we're sitting on the speedometer menu. We need to scroll up and down here till we see the truck icon. So again, use the buttons. You can see right here, we now got the vehicle info. Right now it's on oil life. We're gonna scroll left to right until we see fuel life. That's what we need to do now. Now if we press the right button, much like it says right here, hold right button to reset, we'll hold it. We get a new menu. Menu says, do you want to reset we're gonna scroll up for yes, and we're gonna hold the right arrow to reset. Once you do that, the cluster is gonna show 99%. It'll never go to 100, but it will go to 99%. So we're good on that. So we don't have to worry about that message coming up. Now the last thing I want you to do is I want you to clean the vehicle off, mainly underneath where the fuel filters were. Because the front we let drain out, if you're doing the front, rear we used the hose but we still spilled some of it we need to clean that off because the last thing you want to do is return a vehicle to a customer and they can smell the diesel or they can actually see the drips puddling on the ground just grabbing a water hose is more than enough spray everything underneath and actually that should take care of it that way you actually give it back to them the way that they gave it to you and that right there pretty much sums up everything you need to know when it comes to removing and replacing that rear fuel filter now i've done other videos in the past on the front the procedure is exactly the same. That didn't change for 2019 and up. It was the rear that did. So make sure you check that video out. 
Again, if you like this video, please give it a big thumbs up on YouTube. Don't forget you can find me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And if you got any comments or suggestions about anything you saw in today's video, or anything Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, or Ram related, you can leave something in the comments below, or you can email me at david at motorcitymechanic.com. Also, if you'd like to shop on Amazon, please scroll down into the description. And directly below, you'll see a link. Click on that link and make that your Amazon homepage. That way, anything that you buy will help support this channel. Again, everybody, thanks for watching all these videos.